welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic in Halloween week, no less. Um, now, I hope we will have a Halloween puzzle for the 31st itself for my slot, at least. But we've certainly got one today. Um, this is The Spider by Bobo, and there's, there's plenty of Halloween fare in it. I will get to the rules shortly. Um, and, and, coming out on our app. Um, so, when I say our app singular, I mean the main CTC app that now you download that and you can get any new release on it. But there are a number of free puzzles and there's going to be two this week for Halloween as well, which are going to look a bit like this witch's closet. There's the witch's shapeless hat and what was meant to be a broomstick, but maybe looks a bit more like a hat stand that the hat has fallen off. Um, and... This is Casper the Ghost coming through the fog. Um, we do hope you will enjoy those. Um, and do, do download the app. And there's some paid content as well as those two Halloween puzzles. But do check it out. There is an update to the Lion Sudoku app this week too. So loads going on. And we're definitely well in the works for the Fog of War app that we've been planning for some time. So... Great news on the apps. Do check those out. They're on the links under the video. You can also find your way to Patreon where um, we've already had a Halloween themed um, Patreon reward and Skunkworks, who did a Halloween themed hunt before for us, are doing November's and it's duality too. The rather um, brilliant idea of using lines or symbols in the grid to mean two things more than just one. So... Um, Skunkworks are an amazing collective of people who basically, in my view, push each other on to better things. Um, and we get to benefit. If you join us on Patreon, you get that Patreon reward on the 1st of November. Um, and, of course, you can check out Sven Sudoku Pad and our merchandise on the links under the video. And I have to say, because I haven't before, that it was absolutely great to see so many people in Stratford-on-Avon on... Um, Sunday, I was there with Simon. We were, well, Simon solved a puzzle and I heckled him quite hard. And very kindly, the audience did not heckle him. I can report that there was no shouting at Simon as though he was on a screen, which was great restraint, I'm sure. Um, but it was absolutely fabulous to hang around and meet so many people afterwards. Um, Honestly, I mean, it just makes you feel like a celebrity if somebody comes up and wants a selfie or, a, or a, a signature in their book. I got to see a lot of copies of this book, for instance, and to um, sign, sign my picture in it, um, which was great. Um, do check out our books. They're great, too. Anyway, let's have a look at the rules of The Spider by Bobo, in which normal Sudoku rules apply. So we're going to try and put one to nine in every row, every column and every three by three box. Two cells connected by a spider leg, that's the green line, must have a difference of at least five. Cells on the spider's body strictly increase as they move away from the abdomen bulge. <laughs> that's a new way of describing the thermo, but there we go, the thermo bulb is the abdomen bulge in this case. Cells touched by the ghost are odd. Cells joined by a pumpkin are consecutive, so that's like an odd marker. Those are like white dots. Cells joined by a bat. Now, these are not black dots. They sum to six. The black cat, it says, just happens to hang out there. Really? The cat isn't a clue? Bobo, what are you up to? I don't know, but I'm looking forward to giving this a go. Um, it's meant to be quite approachable, but we will see what we will see. Give it a try on that first link under the video. And um, I wish you a non-scary Halloween. Let's get cracking. So, quite a lot of German whispers in this box. We know that you cannot put five on a German whisper line. So the five in the central box must be in one of those cells. Um, we also know that digits on a German whisper line must alternate between high and low. Uh, because you can't have five. Some are higher than five, some are lower than five, and you can't put two high ones together for instance. Um, we also know that four and six can be quite difficult to place if they're in places on a green line where they have two neighbours that see each other. For instance, here, you can't put a four because those would both have to be nine. 
Now, all of that said, I think there aren't that many places on this line, well, maybe these lines you can't put four or six on, but these diagonal places you can, so that's not the help that it sometimes is. Okay, this is higher than five, so this has to be a high digit. Is that worth marking? Seems a bit unlikely that it's worth marking to me, so I don't know. Okay, let's start with the bats, maybe, which are either one five or two four pairs, since they add up to six. Um, yeah, okay, that's going to take one of the low digits out of this column. Now that is a different polarity in terms of high or low from that, because that will be the same as that, and those two will be the same. So that's one of each. These are the same polarity and, uh, because, because of the pumpkin, actually. Oh, OK, this is worth colouring, I think. So let's choose green and purple. Uh, let's choose... Oh, green. No, let's not choose green and purple. Green's a bit bright here. Let's choose yellow and purple. So yellow there, alternating to purple, yellow, purple. And on this line, to purple, yellow, purple. Now, I don't know which of yellow and purple is high and which one is low, but I do know they kind of must go together on a pumpkin. So that's purple as well. Because you can't put a 5 on a green line, and therefore you must be in the same polarity area. So those are yellow, and that's purple. Now, in this column, this can't be a 2-4 pair on the bat, because there's three more digits which must be low, whether it's purple or yellow, and such do not exist. So that's a 1-5 pair. Um... This is going to be the last high digit in the column. And we now know that purple is high. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. I've got that the wrong way around. Um, well, I've got my logic the wrong way around. This is either the last purple or the last yellow. So we don't know which of purple or yellow is high out of that at all. Now, here, right, one of these two is yellow. One is yellow and one is purple. Uh, even that's not telling me anything. That's quite a... No or is it? Yes, it is. Because there must be a low digit on this bat. That's quite big. There must be a low digit on this bat. Even if it's a 1-5, there's one low digit on it. And yellow, which has got three there, and one in one of these places, can't have any presence on the bat. So the bat has no yellow, but it does have low. So yellow is high. There we go. That's how we do it. So yellow go becomes orange for high. Blue is the colour for low. Um, right, and blues in column two are two, three, and four. This is now orange. I can't remember whether I was trying to make it the right colour or not earlier. Um, these others are... Well, where does six go in this column? Because it cannot touch a 2, 3, or 4 on a green line. That's great. So 6 is there. And these others are 7, 8, 9. Now, 6 there has emerged, unsurprisingly, not on a line, which is a shame. Um, now, what does that tell us? I mean, I was intrigued by the idea that these are all odd. I'm not going to start marking odds as orange, because that would be very counterproductive when I've started marking odds as high. Uh, but it's definitely interesting. So these are all high in some way. That one can't be a six. This pair could have a one in it, but it doesn't have to. Or does it? Is there a reason, given the oranges it's touching, no, I don't think there is. I don't think there is. I, I can't see how that would work. This is definitely high. That's quite interesting. I know this is high because of five on the thermo. Well, that's finally borne some fruit. Now, there's three oranges in row three, and there's got to be another one in that pair. So everything else in row 
three is either a five or blue, but on a whisper it's got to be blue. So then we go orange, blue, orange through these odd cells of the ghost. And that means this is a seven, nine pair of high. That is not a three because it's definitely touching a seven. So there's our second digit, that's a one. This is another odd digit, which is three or five. There's one high and one right. I don't think this can be a, the six can't be the high digit here because it would be with a one, but we've already had one in the box. So the high digit here is an eight. This is either eight, two or eight, three. And eight can be removed from the other cells in the row. Even this one is six, seven or nine. Now, if that was six, this is quite a constrained thermo. Mm, that would be very interesting because this thermo would have two low digits on it. Actually, that seems very possible in the central box at the moment. I was wondering if there was going to be a constraint that five must end up in the middle so that we can have a high and a low, but I don't think that works with these spider legs particularly. Um, I don't know what you think, Bobo. I don't think this puzzle is as easy as you were claiming. <laughs> uh, now, we've got a definite... Uh, we've used all the highs here. One of those is a six. Now, if that's a six, that's a one, that's a two, we get quite a lot of go forward then. But if that's a six, that's where five is. And both of those would be very interesting conclusions, but I don't think I can draw either of them yet. So, what can I do? Oh, I can say that's not a 1 by Sudoku, so that's not a 5. Um, 7, 9 pair there. One of these is of each parity because of this four-legged, four-celled leg, four-legged line, I was going to call it, which uh, makes no sense, but there we go. Halloween is addling me at the moment. Um, this could be any low digit. So one of the, these are from one, two, three, four, five, because they're not high. The fourth high in the column is in one of those cells. Ah, if these were all low, for instance, then these cells would all be high. I suppose that's just enough for the column. That's not actually powerful then. Fair enough. Um, we just don't know. Low, where does the five go? I'm getting interested in that, but it's not, it's not very beneficial to be interested in that. Okay, let's think about these pairs again. We worked out that six couldn't go with any of them. Wherever seven is, it's going with two. Wherever 8 is, it's going with 3. And wherever 9 is, it's going with 4. So that is not the 8-3 pair, and that's not a 3, because we know that's not an 8 because of over here. Um, does that tell me anything new? It doesn't feel like it, but it, I mean, it was a definite a positive deduction. This pair. If they were six, seven, that would have to be nine. That would be seven, and that would be two. This would be one. I mean, it's quite powerful, but, but it's not mandated yet. Oh, look, there's a four and a six somewhere in box three. Knowledge bomb. And now, because of the ghost, they've got to be in these cells. And this isn't a two, four bat. It's a one, five bat. Now there has to be a five in this box somewhere, and it can only be there. Now this bat is not 5-1 either way round, it's a 2-4 bat. And there is a 5 in one of these cells in the column, and now there is a 5 in column 6 definitely here. Now the 5 in row 3 is there. I didn't expect this to open up a world of possibilities, but it's doing, it's doing all right so far. 2-4 and 5, so I could mark those as low, why not? Um, and the one in box two is in one of those positions. And down here we have four, six, and either two or three. Okay, I can't. 
cannot see what's going on there. Um, these are odd digits from 1, 3 and 5. Yeah, if they included a 1, then this bulb couldn't be a 1. That sort of feels halfway to interesting somehow, but I can't see what it's doing. 5179. Oh, we've now got, a, we've probably had for ages a 679 set there. That can't be 6. 679. These are from 234. Now, I don't know that. I don't know why I'm saying that. In fact, that's low. That's what's happened here. And it's not 1. That is 2, 3, or 4. That's probably why I was saying it for some reason. So one of these is a 1. Hmm, wherever 6 is in this column, in one of those cells, it's got a 1 on next to it on the line, but that can't be in those cells because of the bat. So 6 is definitely in one of these two, and therefore one of these is definitely a 1. And because of the pumpkin, that is a 1-2 pair. It's weird how quickly I fell into accepting that white dots have been replaced by pumpkins in this Halloween puzzle. Anyway, this is now 3 or 4 and can't touch a 7. And now this can't be a 6, and there's definitely an 8 on this pumpkin. 1 and 2, oh no, I was going to... 3 or 4, remember these pairs all went with the thing 5 apart. So 8 or 9 doesn't go with 2. And now I've got a 3, 4 pair, yes. So that's a 2, going with a 7. Uh, I was going to write a 1 in here, but that's dangerous because that can be a 2 as well, so I can't do that. That is not a 7. We've got an 8, 9 pair and a 3, 4 pair. Good. Now, we've got that 7. That makes this a 6, 9 pair. Didn't we say that we had to play 6 in this column and it couldn't be in those cells? We did. There it is. There it is. 9 on the end of thermo does no help at all, but... 6 on a green line gives us a 1. That gives us a 2, and that makes this an 8-3 pair. That makes this a 4. That makes this the 1 in the row. These cells are 3, 7, and 8, and that one can't be a 7. These cells don't need to have corner marks anymore. They are known to be a 2-6 pair. Okay, what's that told us in box one, probably something, seven, nine. I can't see quite if it has told us something. Five, seven, nine, and a one. This is not a two. Okay, and the thermo didn't really get revealed, but where does one go in the central box? That's very nice. Suddenly that is positioned. Now I can color its line. And this low digit is not allowed to be a 1 or a 2 by Sudoku. So that's 3 or 4, touching 8s or 9s. Now there's only one place for 7 in column 4 on the pumpkin with an 8, and that becomes a 9. This can't be 4 anymore, so that's 3. This is 4, that needs a 9. This is now 3, and we know that these were going with their 5 apart pairs, so we can fill in 4 and 9 at the top. 4 and 2 there, 2 and 6 in the corner. This is 3 or 8 by Sudoku. 3, 9, 1, 4, 5. That is high, definitely. Actually, so is that, which is slightly more interesting. That's 6 or 8. Okay, these aren't going to be determined by whispers. All the whispers on the left side of the spider have been done. How extraordinary. Right, now, what is going on the right-hand side in box 5? We need a 9 somewhere. That's very clear. Um, oh, that's become a 3-5 pair. That's allowed, that's annoying. That's allowed 1 to get on to get on board at the beginning of the, sorry, in the abdomen bulge, not in, not in the bulb in this puzzle at all, in the abdomen bulge. Um, <clears throat> so nine was in one of those cells. I don't know. Yes, maybe it is. No, it's not. It's not helpful. These, I don't know what these other ones are. Right, 
let's have a look at that pair, which sees 6, 3, 8. And this cell sees a 7, 2, and a 1. So that is 2, 4, or 9. Touching, if it was 2, it could touch a 7. If it's 4, it must touch a 9. But if it's 9, bother, lots of possibilities. OK, let's have a look down the final column. That is eliminated a bit. Two, six, four, one. Oh, the one five is done by the one we got in row six. Sorry if you were shouting about that at the screen. I would understand that. Right, the five is going to place fives in both boxes four and five now. And now we need a number here that is not seven, eight, or nine, but is bigger than five. So that is an orange six. I bet this is going to turn out to be Mr. Unhelpful four here, but we'll, we'll have to work on that yet. This is a naked seven, sees everything else. That is six or eight. This is a one, four, nine, triple. One, five, nine, four. Then these are from two, six, seven, eight. That's, oh, three is looking at that cell. And we get another blue. I didn't color that one blue when I had the chance. Um, it doesn't really do much. It puts three off all the lines in one of those positions. Oh, maybe I should think about this line again. But has anything really changed? Not really. Ah, frustrating. Maybe this five. Yeah, we need a one in box six, either on the cat or on the spider leg as they say in all good Sudoku circles. Um, three and eight, what digits can they be touching? Or let's think about this box. That's two, three or four, that's a low digit. These are a high nine and two lows. So these digits are a low and two highs. And much good may that do me. This, oh, look, this is lower than two, three, or four, but it sees one, three, so that's a two. That's a surprise that that became known. It doesn't sort out any of these, does it? Um, so now two has to be in one of these cells, touching seven, eight, or nine on the whisper. Right, I'm gonna, I was gonna say color these in. I mean, candidate them in. That one can't be a four. One of these is a four. If that was a four, these would both have to be nine. Ah, oh, that looks annoyingly possible. If that was a four, this would have to be nine. But I can't quite rule either of those out from being low for that purpose. If that was high, this is a seven nine pair. That feels a bit more interesting. That would be where one went in the row. So if they were high, that's a seven, nine pair. This would be low, two, three, or four. I'm not, not making much advance on that. I'm not meant to have interpreted the cat, am I? I don't know. That, that's magic beyond my powers. Five, two, three, nine. There is a one in one of those cells. I know that by Sudoku. It's not, well, I say it's not, I mean, it stops that being a one. It does mean this, well, this isn't a six. It also means that's not a six, which was obvious anyway. Right, this is four, seven, or eight. Now, if it's four, this is nine. If that's seven or eight, this is two specifically, because it can't be one or three. So that's a bit more limited than we've seen in this area before. In fact, there is a two in one of those cells. I'm only just noticing. Okay, let's carry on. If that was a nine, this would have to be a four. It sees one, two, and three. If that was a two, this would be seven or eight. So this is quite limited too. And up here, if that was a four, this is a nine. If that's seven or eight, this is two or three. Those are very different digits, two, three, or nine. This one is definitely three, four, or nine. Well, it can't be four given that. 
Oh, goodness. I mean, this is quite close to breaking down, but, but not there. Two, three, nine, four. Four is proving quite hard to play with. Okay, one of those is high and is nine or seven. So is that. That uses up all the high digits in the row. So that is one or four. This is also low, two or four, specifically. Because it can't be a one. I mean, that's surprising that we're able to sequester that down, but it is true. Okay, let's see. If that goes nine, three, eight, then we need low here, which would be three again. Goodness me. If that goes three, eight, three, then this is high, eight or nine. Somewhere we're going to finally tease out a triple or something. That is three, eight or nine by Sudoku. There's the triple that we just teased out, as predicted. Three, eight and nine there. So that is one or four, and that is one or four on the cat. I don't think the cat can represent a black dot. Oh, it could do still. Anyway, that's now a nine by Sudoku. That's not a nine, and therefore it's low. And that's the sort of conclusion we do want. Low there and low there, high here and here. This low is a two. That is not a two. If that's low, it's a definite one. But we still got one high and one low here. One high and one low here. These are not fours anymore, obviously. They're, in fact, I've marked them as blue when I, I was going for orange. They're high. Oh, for that to be a three, this would be an eight. What happens then? Not enough, not enough. For that to be high, this would be a seven, eight, nine triple. That's quite interesting. Now, what's going on here? This can't be a six, so it can't be high. We've had nine, eight, seven in the row. If this was a six, that would have to be a one. So this is low, that's huge. Now we know the polarity of all but one of the spider legs. And this one, well, these didn't actually fully resolve, but that's now seven or nine. That's a seven, nine pair. That's a three, eight pair. And this is a nine. And now we do know all the polarities on the German whisper lines. And this is low. And we've still got two, three, four, triple, but we've got a two, four pair in the row. That's a one, that's a four. We've got a one on the cat. It is not a black dot cat. It's just hanging out, as we were promised. I shouldn't have been so suspicious of the little cat. Uh, that's not allowed to be a two in this column. One is blue, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And I suppose six is orange for what it's worth. Not much. Right, I feel like we're on track now. We can do this line with its heights and lownesses. Loaths? Are they ever called loaths? Probably not. Now, that's a 2-4 pair by the colouring, and that's a 6. Um, and in this column, that's not allowed to be 8. But it can't be 6, so that's a 7 touching a 2. And the whisper is really bearing fruit now. Three and four, use the whisper again, eight there. And these central rows, all but that pair are done. That's forming a pair in this column, that's a four. That must be a four by Sudoku. That's a six, which is orange, by my marvelous coloring in mechanism. That makes this an eight. Put six at the top of the grid. This is three or eight. This is a two seven pair that are actually resolved. I'll catch up on the coloring in a moment. Six goes here, the eight goes there, one goes there, seven goes there. Okay, the bat's done, all the bats are done. The ghost is not completed, he's hung on to the very end. Oh, that's three in the corner. That's three in the spot. Light losing its religion. And a good time to lose your religion on Halloween night, I suppose. Eight, three, seven. 
we're going to get another three in the corner to finish off with. But let me colour in our Halloween grid first. Orange there, I hope I haven't made any mistakes. Easy to do at this stage, probably doing it as I speak. Those are blue, fives don't get a colour. We get another three in the corner and you have conquered the spider and survived the night. The spirits must have been on your side. Happy Halloween. Um, brilliant. Thank you, Bobo. That was great fun. And I hope you've had a go at that puzzle and enjoyed it. And I hope you feel um, emboldened to have a look at Casper the Ghost and the Witch's Closet on the app. Thank you for watching, as always. Uh, they are free. And I uh, hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.